Some people don't have a choice. So, oh my god, what are you doing? <laughs> Bye. Hi everyone. My name is Brea and welcome to my broom closet. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I've decided to do a witchy haul video. Last weekend I went out to town for, you know, the first time since lockdown really. I decided to go into some witchy shops and, you know, just <laughs> go all out for the first time since I've been able to for you know about four months so I thought you guys might be interested in what I got so I'm gonna show you in this video ignore this this is just my cat uh, he's sleeping here <laughs> so he's just gonna be chilling down there <laughs> so I guess we'll start with the first shop that I went into so basically when I went out to town I was looking for this shop that I usually go into but on the way to finding that shop I actually found a new store that I'd never seen before and they sold loads of crystals oh my goodness it was heaven in there I managed to resist most of them apart from this one which is if it's gonna focus if even if it doesn't focus it's a angel aura quartz so it's coated in like a layer of metal which gives it an iridescent shine which I can't capture on this camera right now but I will give you some better shots later or I'll put them on screen right now probably yeah, it's sort of in focus there isn't it beautiful? Um, I don't normally get clusters but I figured that I should because um, clusters are really good at cleansing the crystals around them which I am in serious lack of. Not crystals, I just mean clusters. <laughs> I do not like crystals, I am a bit of a crystal goblin myself. I managed to just resist and just buy one of them. Um, this one was £12, so that seems kind of expensive for a crystal this size, but Angel Aura Quartz is not that common. Um, hence why I've been wanting it for so long and I've only just got it. So, um, this one has definitely been on my wish list for a while, so I hope you guys like it. From that shop I also got a lovely tarot sleeve bag, it's got um, lovely goddess figurines on it and also the spiral meaning journey, that was my cat. So that is a really lovely bag that I got, this one's already in a sleeve but I'll just demonstrate how good it is and might as well so i've got my everyday witch tarot here and it's lovely in there it's great i might even keep some other stuff in it like a rune set or, or something these sort of bags are just really useful for that sort of thing like um traveling with crystals or like I said, tarot cards and rune sets. Um, you could even make a magical pouch out of it. So yeah, I quite liked that, so I picked it up. Then I kept going to the store that I originally wanted to go to. Unfortunately, they had quite strict COVID restrictions in there, so only one person in the shop allowed at the time, but I had my face mask on, and luckily when I went there I was the only person there, so I was able to go in. I picked up this lovely bag, I thought it was great. I thought I could also use this as a tarot sleeve. And then this was the label that was on it, that is not focusing, well it says the Elvish um, the Elvish Tailor, if I can even speak today. So this is handmade by the Elvish Tailor whose family have been making clothes since at least 1360. Designs are inspired by dreams, folk and fairy tales. Um, that's fairy as in fae. Um, enjoy wearing it, it is filled with Elvish magic. So I thought that was wonderful, absolutely beautiful design on the front also from the same manufacturer so this says on the label um, the Elvish Taylor made in England this beautiful scarf with this absolutely exquisite phoenix design on it 
hand embroidered. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get that. I absolutely love phoenixes. Is that the plural of that word? I, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, yes, I can use it as a scarf, but I thought I'd probably be more likely to use it as an altar cloth or um, a cloth to put tarot spreads on. So do some tarot readings on it. Um, yeah, it smells like the incense in the shop. I thought that was absolutely beautiful. I don't know if you agree, but ah, uh, it's so lovely. I can't stop staring at it. <laughs> so that's basically all the items that I got. But now we'll move on to the books. I got quite a range of books. So in that shop, I got three books, and then after I went there I actually went to a chain bookstore and I got this book which I will show you last. So let's start from the top. I got this one, The Modern Witchcraft Guide to Magical Herbs by Judy Ann Nock. Other works that I've read from Judy Ann Nock, she is quite a decent author, good um, reputable works, so I thought I would pick up this book that I had not read before. Um, and I'll tell you why I picked it up is because I've never really ventured down the path of being a green witch before so I thought that should be something that I should try so I'll just show you a few pages this also smells like the shop I bought it from like even the, the inside of the pages smells of incense is amazing quite a few herbs and their magical meanings in here how to make herbal charms Lots of like spells, also baneful magic in here too. So we've got the full kind of spectrum of different magical things. And I think it also starts with just basics on growing herbs in the first place. So we've got a history of herbalism. We've even got how to compost. How to compost things, so I love that. We've got a little bit of kitchen witchery, so that's actually quite good for broom closet witches because it's quite a subtle practice to do. So this will be quite useful not only to a green witch but also kitchen witches and broom closet witches um, by extension. So this should be a good book. Hopefully if I get through it quite quickly I'll do a review on it. So let me know if you'd like to see something like that. I also got this one which is the Book of Celtic Magic by Christopher Hughes. The reason why I got this book was because, again, um, I kind of always wanted to explore the more Celtic side of witchcraft and kind of going down that path. I've never really pursued that path very much, so I thought I might give it a go. I do not know this author or the book at all. I'm might have to be careful about you know believing everything that I'm reading it might be absolute trash or it might be a really good book so hopefully I'll get through this and I'll be able to do a review on it but that is always the risk of picking up books from authors that you don't really know there are quite a few authors out there with not so good reputations hopefully this guy is not one of them and then this book oh my goodness I've been wanting this book for so long Buckland's Complete Book of Witchcraft. This book is recommended by so many witches. I recommend it to It is, you know, what it says on the tin, just a complete book. A complete guide to witchcraft, basically. I'm not going to deny that it has aged a little bit. So I think this was first, like, published in the 60s, yeah. Yeah, I think it was first published in the 60s and it shows. There are a few things that have not aged very well, but it is great. It is absolutely perfect to get all that overview of just witchcraft in general. It has great information on um, a basic history of witchcraft. Before now, I've had to unfortunately pirate this book by getting online copies but now I don't have to pirate it anymore. Hi cat. <laughs> He's just turning around. Aww. He just laid his head on the Celtic magic book. I think he's given it his blessing. Pirating is bad, however, some people don't have a choice. 
So, oh my god, what do you do? <laughs> Bye! Witches, just like me, in the broom closet, sometimes don't have a choice, especially with a book this big. Like, how would you hide this if you were in the broom closet? I have no idea. So, I've definitely not hidden a book this big before. So, yes, pirating is bad but sometimes it is people's only choice. What I like to do is if I pirate a book, if I ever see it in real life in a bookshop, then I will buy it. So there is that. I'm not a completely evil person. <laughs> Let's talk about this last book that I got. I got Wikipedia by, can't read that, Sean Robbins and Liana Greenaway. Liana? I don't know how to pronounce names. This book, I've read like a bit of it, I have a friend who had a copy and I read some of it so I thought it looked really good so I thought I would pick up a copy of my own. The reason why I really wanted to pick it up after I read some of it is because it has some information on Ouija boards and mediumship and spirit communication which you don't really see in other books especially mainstream ones that you get in chain bookstores. I think um, a lot of people kind of shy away from that sort of stuff because it's more of a left hand path thing so we've got a whole chapter on the spiritual world I don't know, I thought it just covered f things that other books don't really or not any that I've read anyway it is basically a beginner's guide and it covers quite a lot of stuff oh also why I really wanted this is because it has a whole chapter on digital magic well, not a whole chapter, but you know, it actually has a conversation about modern witchcraft and using technology in your craft, which I have not seen a book do that before. So I really wanted to pick that up, so I did. Okay, last item I have for you is nothing to do with witchcraft really, but I thought it would just be interesting, which is this. I literally just picked it up on a whim. Bring your own Venus flytrap. You just add flies, apparently, not even... Even though Venus flytraps don't really need flies, but they don't even survive, it's just extra nutrition. You already have, like, your plant pot. Um, make it like a great mini offering bowl, but... <laughs> anyway, um, you've got sand, because they need sand. And you've got your peat moss that you just add water to. Here are the seeds. That's the seed pack. And then you've got a cute little guidebook containing some instructions. And the reason why I bought these is because I used to have Venus Flytrap for a good, like, two years, but it kind of died. <laughs> and I was really sad because I really liked it, so... I do know about the whole hibernation thing, like, they do hibernate and I let it hibernate, but it just didn't come back after it hibernated. I think it was because... I was using tap water, which is a big no-no, but I didn't have a choice at the time because I was living at uni. I could not get hold of the appropriate water, but now I can, so I can continue to grow a Venus flytrap. So I'm going to try growing it from a seed and see how that goes. I might make a video on that, I don't know how interested people will be, but honestly, like these seeds have to go into the fridge for three weeks and then, and then you bury them. So it's like, will it even work? <laughs> I'd really like to just see if that even works. I think it'd be an interesting experiment. So yeah, that's all I got over the weekend. This stuff was not cheap, by the way. <laughs> but I am glad that I did it because honestly, I've no I haven't been able to go out to town in ages. You know, not since lockdown. Literally, the only place I've been is the supermarket and back. That is the only place I've been for about four months. It was lovely to go to town and just spend quite a lot of money on new books, which is lovely to do once in a while. I hope you guys enjoyed that witchy haul video. I hope my cat wasn't too distracting. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Sorry this wasn't really broom closet related, but I am hoping to get back on that soon. Um, I've got some more ideas on the way. To help more towards broom closet witchcraft so please stay tuned for that and if you're not subscribed already please subscribe for more videos from me if you liked this video then please give it a thumbs up 
And also, if you need any more information on Broom Closet Witchcraft in general, then just visit the subreddit r slash broomclosetwitch, that's on reddit.com. There will be a link to that in the description for you. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed, please stay safe, and blessed be.